Cause that's so ticket to being the bad guy. Yeah. Now, did you know? Did you have? Like, did you realize that that's what you you were coming as a bad guy? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody loves the bad guy. Welcome everybody to Business Outlaws. Our guest today, we're pretty excited, aren't we, Michael? Yes, we are. Is the greatest professional boxer of all time, in oh, my opinion. Oh, man. In my opinion. Okay. Who competed for over 20 years. He is known to be the youngest undisputed world heavyweight champion and holds the record as the youngest boxer to win a heavyweight title at 20 years old. In 1986, he won the World Boxing Council title after stopping Trevor Burbick in the second round. He then added the World Boxing Association and International Boxing Federation title in 87. But everybody knows Mr. Tyson, Mike Tyson. Please give him a round of applause. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so, Mike, the... Kind of the premise of this show is Big Mike and I were hang, hanging out. We've been friends for a long time, and we were having a conversation in his backyard and just talking about life and business and things, and we're like, man, it, people don't really tell you the truth about this sort of stuff, the stuff we talk about, and wouldn't it be fun if we could go back in time and tell the 24-year-old self, you know, our 24-year-old self the truth, the things that nobody else will I'll tell you kind of a thing. And so that's kind of been the premise of this show is telling the younger kids and younger generation how it really works. There's an idealized version that everybody you puts are, out there. You are aware that some people, yes, will not listen to you. Oh, yeah. Most won't. No. No. Okay. Yeah, you can give them the recipe, but they, they won't. So that's kind of the premise of yeah. this is, you know. So my, my question, my first question is because we're, we're talking to millennials mostly. And... They think there's an easy button to life. And I want to hear what, what does it take to be a champion? It's basically, um, Mike, you know, you just got to dedicate your whole life to your goal. Whatever goal you, you want to accomplish, you just got to dedicate your whole life to it. I've been doing this since I was 12 years old. And that's my dedication. So, so let's talk about it. 12 years old, like what are you doing to you start your career, I guess, at 12 years old, yeah, right? At 12 years old, I meet wow. this older man named Custamato. Yep. And he starts teaching me how to box. So when I come to this place, I see this old white guy. And I said, what is he going to teach me about fighting? And later I find out I, uh, I didn't know anything. And uh, he took me, and my mother had passed away. He had adopted me. Mm -hmm. And then um, we went on this um, tour and becoming the champion. So what was your typical day? Let's say at 12, 13, 14 years old. What was your typical day like then? And then let's bring that up to like 24, 25. And like, uh, how does that all work? Like, never, what, do you, what do you have to do? What's the kind of commitment and mindset? It never changed um, from 13 to 30. It never oh, really? Changed, no. You get okay. up at 3.30 in the morning, you start running. Wait, every morning you got up at 3.30 in the morning. Yes. Okay. So you go at 3.30, you come back home, you get into your hot bath, you got to get into a hot bath. Especially if you're cutting weight, you get into the hot tub. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, wait hang on. You said 3.30. <clears throat> what do you do at 4 o'clock? What are you doing at 5? What are you doing at 6? You, I'm like... getting in the hot tub. Oh, first thing you do at 3.30 is you get in the hot tub. No, I, get, I run after I finish running. Okay. And get into the hot tub. What How far you, do you run? What would you eat in the morning? Four miles. Excuse me? Four miles? What would you What would you eat? Do you have breakfast or anything? Or what, what do you usually I, eat? I, well, I, would run, I would run on no food. I have an empty stomach. Empty stomach? Yeah. And then you do that. And then after that, you did the hot tub. And then what came next? Then we ate. And, and what, after that, I went to school. And then after school, what would you do? I came to the gym. Wow. And how long would you stay in the gym for after school? For three hours. For three hours? And when you got older, did that routine change at all? Because now... You're, you're what, 18 years old? You're yeah. no longer in school? You're a professional boxer? What did that training day look like? It was the same thing. Exactly. It was constantly training. But instead of school, you're in the gym that whole time? In the gym, yes. And what would you do in the, like, what would you do? Would you study films and, and I watched like, a lot of films before I went to bed, but most of the really? time I would be sparring. I sparred a lot. I so, did a lot of contact fighting. A lot of contact fighting. When you watch these, these uh, films and videos of, of other boxers, how much time would you spend doing that? I would do that um, for a couple of hours a night. A couple hours a night. So you're studying. You're working your ass off. 
physically, and then you're studying for another two hours. Yeah, so I'm studying I, older fighters, fighters. Yes, from yeah, the yes, past. yes. Study. It's still studying. Like you're looking at the old fighters, what they're doing, what what you can take with, and what you don't want to. It's that that is a commitment. And anyone who's listening here, if you think that you're going to be successful and it's going to be an easy ride, it's going to be one of the toughest rides in your life to be a champion or to be top of your game. And you can't get discouraged. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can't get discouraged if you lose or something happens. Yep. Um, t- um, hard times come across to everybody. So when you go through difficult times, mm-hmm. it's got to suck it up. Just keep so going. That, so what did, you, what did all that training and that discipline, what, what did it teach you that you brought into your business life and your personal life? And my dedication. Like, what do you tell your kids? Like, what advice... Because that's a huge price to pay. My like, kids are a lot different than I was. Sure. They, um, they have food to eat. They have nice house. They have, so if they don't do mm-hmm. good in the gym, um, they're going to go home to a nice yeah. home. Yeah. yeah. That was different with us. You know, we, you have to win. Every time you win, um, the step getting out of the hood. In a lot of ways, like, you're self-made. Like, right? Like, Mike and I are both self-made, but you're self-made. Like, you put it on your back and you made it happen. Well, I'm self-made, but, you know, someone helped me. Somebody guided yeah, me. Yeah, sure. You're, you're mentored. Yeah. All of us were. Like, Chris has mentored. I've been mentored. You've been mentored. That's one of the keys to success. Every day in the world, I have somebody to believe in you. Because I was um, very insecure that one mm-hmm. time, believe it or not. Sure, of course. Yeah, I was a real yeah, insecure kid. It. And, um, well, even talking about this guy. I know. It's, it's okay. really difficult. You're in the same we're, place here. We're still, um, we're still well, I, I, insecure I, I, sometimes. I, I understand. We're definitely <laughs> yeah. But that's the yeah. stuff nobody that's, talks yeah. about. Nobody comes out and says right. that we're, you know, that it's not easy. When did you believe in yourself? There has to be a certain time in your training between 13 and winning the world championship that you, one day you go, fuck, I am good. Like, I'm, I'm going to kill these I'm people. I'm 15. Ridden. When you're 15. Tell us about that moment. Yeah. What happened? I won the world title as an um, amateur. Yeah. And so, like, what was it after the fight, during the fight, you step in the ring, like, put us in that mindset, that moment where you just, that, that moment of clarity where it just went, fuck. I said I could take this all away and be the best ever. Yep. Did it make you work harder? Absolutely. Then you really dug in? Absolutely. And you have your little goals, you want to go here, you want to win this, you want to win this, you get this, you want to win this. And it goes all the way to the belt. When you're watching film, because we've watched a, a lot of interviews about you talking and one of the things that you said in an interview was that some of the boxers that you would watch and study didn't always have the best record but they were entertaining and they were exciting to watch how much of boxing and how early on did you understand that there was a marketing aspect and an entertainment aspect to the the game well, boxing is show business, and, oh. people, and it doesn't necessarily mean by if you to be the greatest fight. There's many fighters that were the greatest fighters, but uh, they weren't flancy, they weren't flashy, they were really dull. But they kept winning. But people didn't like to watch them fight. Mm-hmm. Then you get a guy like um, Joe Gotti. He goes in there, he gets beaten all the time, but he's very excited when he loses. People want to see excitement. So I was sure. a very exciting fighter. So, so you diagnosed that at a young age, that there was a difference between the two, and you realized it wasn't just boxing, it was entertainment and well, show had, business. Yes, a lot of attitude, too. Well, look at Muhammad Ali. He was the one who, you know, he, no, he was, he was the, the first. The sh- best, like, he was, a, well, not just boxing, but just selling tickets and, and showing and getting people riled up and, and wanting to come and see the event. So there's there is a See, lot I of show tickets, business. I sold tickets of being the bad guy. Yeah. Now, did you know? Did you have? Like, did you realize that that's what you you were coming as a bad guy? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah. Everybody loves the bad guy. And Mike and I have talked about this. Big Mike and I. Sorry, two Mikes. That's right. Big Mike and I have talked about this, where it becomes an alter ego, where you create an alter ego and then you kind of live up to that alter ego. When you were conscious of having a personality that was entertaining and engaging. Did you did you have to create that and then live up to it? Like practice it, work it out? Because naturally, like Mike and I are both introverts, but when we're on stage or when we're talking, it's it's something that we created in the beginning, right? right. Am I explaining yeah. that right? Yeah. yeah. No, to, um, I, I created I created who I am. I am Mike Tyson. But you you went through steps in the creation of who you are. You had to think about <clears throat> what you wanted and 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 how you wanted to be perceived. Or did you have a team around you that said, hey, no, we want to sell just, tickets, this is the this best is way of doing it? was going to be. I was going to be this guy with the yep. black trunk, the black shirt, no tr- no, no um, robe, just be the hard ass. But you created that yourself. Yes. 
How much time would you spend visualizing and thinking about that before it happened? Oh, ever since I was a kid. You would just dream it over and over? What sort of things when you were dreaming it would you do to make it real? Like, would you smell the room? Like, would you like... No, I wouldn't just do that. But, you know, we just train, constantly train. And just constantly thinking about it. Being the best. Obsessed? Yeah. Obsessed, yeah. That's so you're making mean. movies. You're making movies in your head. And these movies, because your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between a made-up movie or a real event, by the way. So when you're making these movies in your head, you're programming your subconscious brain to go and, you know, be a champion. Well, you got to be a champion before you actually become the champion. You got to be a champion before you become the champion. Yeah. So in For the, a long time. In, right? in the movies that you made, you saw yourself beating everybody. Yeah, would you make imaginary movies? Like, I'm, I'm going to fight, like, Joe Frazier. Like, what would that be all, like? All and, the time. And really? Won, yeah. And you won. Did you win against Muhammad? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really? You would fight Muhammad? Yeah. But, yeah, he yeah. Says the best. You know, I noticed something about you. Every time, like, you're done fighting, you knock the guy out, you would go and hug him. Happy that it's over. Yeah? Yeah. So how did you, you feel, feel bad? At that moment? Yeah, did you feel bad? Or you picked him up, or you felt like victory, and then you're like, oh man, I hurt this guy. Yeah, or no? exactly. Really? Wow, I hope this guy's okay. Because sometimes, yeah. sometimes the guys are unconscious. Oh yeah. I think, fuck. You, you ever get you hit someone so hard, you're so scared, and look at him, you're just like, please get up, please get up. Yeah. Really, most of your fights. No, it's a couple of fights. You hit the guy, you just whoa, the guy got hit a little bit too hard. The way he fell, he didn't move, and I said, oh shit. Wow. It's crazy. It okay, so this is the only show that we know of that we have a bud tender and we have a bartender. And so I'm going to ask the bud tender to come over and they hey, me, I want, we're going to Yeah, I want Tyson. We're going to try Tyson's Tyson. Tyson stuff. Ranch uh, Sativa. We got it in the. Uh, so this is Scree Louie. He's our bartender. Tell us what it is, Scree. It's, uh, it's his strain. It's a uh, jelly bean. It's a sativa. It's Tyson Ranch. It, it smells really good. It smells amazing. Jelly bean. Should taste I like better. that, man. All right. Yeah. Did you try it? No, not yet. I'm going to try Are it right now. Are you supposed to try it? Jelly bean? Jelly right. bean. Yeah, Tyson Ranch. Right. It's nice. I like it. We'll see, we'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> <coughs> and you have your own line of bongs coming out by the same company. Illidale. Yeah, same guys. Yep. <coughs> Tell us about those bongs. Like they're you know, some, um, they're they're limited edition they're or whatever. Limited are edition. I'm going to sign these bongs out. And you're gonna go for a big I, amount of money. Listen, I want one of those bonds that you signed. Well, you got I'm one. I'm here for a sale. You can have You're one. Right. Thank you. Cool. No problem, Big Mike. Good, good, good. You have what you want. How are you prepared for fame? And here you are, 18 years old. You're the world champion. All of a sudden, the whole world is just looking at you. Or you're 20, right? I mean, God, champion. why you hit me with that one? Um, I wasn't prepared for that stuff. Well, a lot of people aren't prepared for for celebrity. They don't realize what it actually entails and if you're not mentally prepared for it it can you know have its way with you so to speak it did have its way it had a good yeah. time with me yeah because when you're visualizing waiting and you're visualizing and obsessed about fighting the fan thing doesn't really come into that equation right you're not thinking about not the side that, not at that moment no and then it just kind of comes up on you and attacks you in a way right well it gets to you eventually yeah did it make you more of an introvert people like what do they want from me and after a while you get well, like you, at some point you had to be pretty confused i wanted to give them what they wanted yeah you did yeah yeah because i wanted what they had to give oh <clears throat> yeah so it was reciprocal big time one thing watching videos of of you younger with cuss and cuss would say that it's good but it's not perfect how much was perfection the the goal it's repetition going over and over again. You're doing it over and over again for hours and hours and years and years. It's adding up. Are you a perfectionist? I try to be. Wow. I don't know if I am, but I try to be. Right. Do you think that that has, has being a perfectionist, though, has caused you some major champion, I'm sure, because you went practice move after move after move until it just became second nature to you. But do you think that also might, might have some impact on your life in a different way? Um, probably with my children. Okay. So do you push the same thing on them or do you back off? No way. Yeah. <clears throat> they can't take it. You think they understand what you went through to create what they have? No, they have no idea. Yeah. And do you talk to them about that? No. Or they wouldn't listen? They don't get into it. No? What are they into? Drake. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, there you go. Drake and video games or what? Is it, your wife's name is Kiki, right? Yes. Yeah. So Drake wrote a song about your wife. No. No? We laugh about that. <laughs> What's the biggest lesson you teach your, your kids? Humbleness. Humbleness. Yes. And do they understand it? No. No. They, they get it one day. Yeah. What do you do different to raise your kids than, than what, what, how you were raised? They have both, fam both parents at the house and yeah. both parents are sober. Yeah. And they have a different lifestyle than me. Because that creates a certain balance, right? I like to hope so. I'm an animal. Oh, forget it. What do you mean? <clears throat> My lifestyle in there, it's, it's totally different. Yeah, totally different. Yeah, with your kids. But you're providing for them at, at the age of 12 or 13, you were providing for yourself. You were becoming self sufficient at a young age, right? Yeah, they're pretty self sufficient now. Hey, yeah. I like your sativa. That's really good. Jelly bean. Yeah, it's good. nice. It's good, good stuff. Is it up? Oh. Yeah. You gotta stay yeah, up. Sativa. Like sativa yeah. sativa keeps you up, dude. What about spirituality? I'm a Muslim, yeah. How how um at what age did you kinda figure out spirituality or have some sort of sense of it? I don't know. I um I'm 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 kind of um conservative with that spirituality. Mm -hmm. I don't throw it in everybody's face. Yeah, it's your personal yeah. thing? Pretty much so, yeah. But at what age? Would it have helped you earlier on to embrace that? I guess maybe is a better question. That's just who I am. That's who I discovered and who I became. You believe in giving back because you have a charity. Yes. Mike Tyson Cares. Tell me about that. Yeah. It's a um, charity that we put together for people that are yes, um, and, 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 com and combatment with their mate or something, like they're kicked out of their house. Mm -hmm. They can't go back in and they're, yeah, this is really what's going on out there. Oh, yeah. And they become homeless and so we have um, shelters for them as well. That's really great. It's, How long have you been doing that uh, this for? For at least six years. Good, what made you decide to do that? My because wife, my wife. Your wife? Yes. Yeah. When you actually did it, how did it make you feel? I um I never I never knew it was um the problem that was going on that there mm -hmm. people that just was terrified and going home. Um, I didn't deal with that life, you know. It was just hard stuff for us. I never mm -hmm. dealt with, never been able to go home before. Mm -hmm. Did you ever do charity work before this? No, that was my first time. So when you did this, I can I'm pretty sure something happened to you when you did that. Did you feel some kind of Something different about yourself after why are you this? trying to get into my feelings Be because because <laughs> I, i'm trying because yes, i started you to try I, no, to i'll tell you why ever since we started yeah well because okay i started holiday heroes i started charity and i know i never went to any charity i thought it was bullshit and then i did i actually did it and it changed my life it's just like wow it, it, it made a big impact so the thing was you can hear about it and i tell people go out and do a charity just do it because it will make a difference in your life. Yeah, we helped a lot of people. Yeah. So I know the feeling I got. And so I just wanted to see if it was exactly the same as what you got. It was a good feeling. Yeah, it is. a great feeling. Yeah, it, and it's a feeling that, that you you can't describe and how it makes you feel because it, it's, you're just, these chemicals are being released in your, in your brain. It feels yeah, really, to really good. Crying. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, I cry yeah, all the time yeah, about, yeah, like, I start talking about to, that stuff. Yeah. Well, we can cry together. It's all right. I don't feel like no, crying I do. Today. It's it's all right. You almost got me earlier, though. I'm not trying to make you cry. No, no, we're we're not trying. I'm not trying to get information. No. We're just trying to get no, some wisdom. We're trying to ask questions. Like you got a lot of wisdom. wisdom. We watch a lot of your interviews, and we want to ask different to get questions. A tear. We are not Barbara Walters. If you, have, if you have a tear, I'll have a tear. I can tell you that right cool, now. Cool, cool. No, but you have a lot of wisdom. We're just trying to get your wisdom out. You, do. you have a lot, a lifetime of experience. You have a, a huge opportunity of influence a lot of young kids. You've paid to a do price. the right thing, and you paid the price. And we want to talk yeah. about that because There's, most people don't. They, they, they think it's nice it. and easy. They think there's an easy button. Oh, Mike Tyson. Yeah, he was a champion. I'm going to be that. They have no fucking clue the amount of time, effort, dedication, and work that it goes into that. And that's what we're trying to extract. Why do you from think you. that's the millennium's way of life? Well, no, they, they they think yeah, they think there's an easy button. Yeah, uh, the Z pen's a little bit different. Magic pill. They think there's a magic pill and this and that. And don't you think that isn't. they think that? I don't know. What it's called entitlement. Do. I was telling you earlier. I know they like Drake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, at, at an early age, Mike, you learned the peekaboo style. 
Yes. Is there anything about that system that later on you applied to business, your business life, or acting, or all the other things that you've done? Was there a foundation in that system that you, part of the mindset or the strategy that you kept with you? Well, the mindset that I'm confident I was always going to get my roles. So confidence? Yeah, I was very confident I was going to get my roles. Speaking about roles, you're an actor in China. Yeah, I've acted there before. Yeah, how they, how, well, tell us about that. Like most Americans have no idea that you go to other countries and you actually are an actor. Yeah, I went to China and I yep. did a movie with um, Danny Young called Ed Man 3. Oh, okay. How'd that go for you? It was a really good movie and they paid me a lot of money. Are you going to do another one? Um, How'd you like acting? I like acting a lot, yeah. yeah. Do you study acting the same way you did boxing? Do you study other actors? Periodically, yes. Who are your, Who do you think is you know good at it that you admire and watch? Why do you want to know? Just curious. Just Why curious how you process are, are, are it, what your system is. Yeah. People are curious. Yeah, I like um, Denzel Washington, Christian Bale, Jamie Foxx. Yeah. They're pretty cool actors. Did you? Jamie played you in a movie, right? No, he's a. About to play he's going movie. to. Yeah. Is that weird? Does that feel weird or? Yeah, it's kind of weird. What have you learned from that? Like, does Jamie ask you a lot of questions and try to become you? And he's he's just starting. He's just starting to talk to me about this stuff. Do you learn about acting through him trying to be you? No. Because he's an amazing actor. Like he's he can incredible. become different people in a <clears throat> crazy way. Like how he became Ray Charles, and. He just. Um, so, what do you think he could become me? I've seen his impression of you, and it, if you helped him, I think he could. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, yeah. I, I think he can beef up, put on some muscle, and uh, he, he's a comedian, and comedians are very, very talented. So, what do you like to do, Mike? Man, I, I got an opinion I, about I, you, but what do you like to do? do, I, do? Oh, wait, I, let's hear the opinion. You know, let's well, hang out for a second. So, I like to study. I, I people would be really study? shocked. About what you I study st people, their anatomies. What do you study? I do study people. I study, uh, you know, behavioral psychology, clinical psychology, uh, marketing, sales. So what kind of what kind of people with behavior would associate with you? My closest friends, I pick them very, very carefully, and I only have probably less than a handful. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, you know why they have six handles on a coffin? Why is that? Because you're a lucky man if you have that many true friends at the end of your life. Oh, yeah, I guess so. How about you? How many, like, for close, 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 tight friends do you really have? Not many at all. Yeah, that's how it usually mm -hmm. is. Yeah. So what do you like to do? You like to travel? So I see you on the um, yeah, I travel. The internet. You travel, you smoke weed. I, I you love this stuff. I just got you back from... beautiful I, women around you. I just, got back from, I just got back from Stockholm, Sweden. So tell me, yeah. what are you doing with that? You just came back from... I, I went there for a, a, a Halloween party, and I went, went to Iceland to look at uh, cheap electrical power, see what the hell's going on there. Cold out there, uh, isn't it? Fuck yeah, it was yeah. cold. I've been to Oslo. Yeah. He went to some um, crazy Halloween party that you had yeah. to fly a helicopter to you in the middle of yeah. nowhere. I guess we got, I actually flew it. It's Augusta 109. So, yeah, I like to tra I travel, experiences, and, uh, and study. We also have the famous Matt Biamonte. Matt keeps everybody in shape. He does. I had no idea boxing was uh, so technical. You know, you watch it on TV, you watch it on TV, and then you start taking lessons. It's like, oh, all these little things and counter moves and stuff. And, and you got to do all that stuff while somebody's trying to punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's That's the harder. great equalizer. <laughs> yeah. My oh, mentor okay. was Angelo Dundee, and for Mike's fight with Trevor Burbick, they hired Angelo because Angelo was always known to talk fighters into doing what they normally couldn't do. So they figured that they'd hire Angelo to work the corner for Trevor Burbick. They gave him, like, two weeks so I said, well, how did that go, Angelo? And then Angelo tells me, he says, he says, man, he goes, they could have had God talking to him that day in the corner. He wasn't going to beat Mike Tyson. But, <laughs> but they honestly hired Angelo just to work the corner and to try to talk Trevor Burbick into winning the fight. And Angelo's like, there was no, no way in hell that anybody was going to talk uh, Trevor Burbick into winning that fight. And so that's how that went. Yeah, that's so funny. I hardly ever see a fight guy, and you're a fight guy. But... Yeah. You've never seen him around. Yeah, no, I'm a big fight guy, man. Mike and I were on the same card. His last fight, I had it with my, actually my first time working a championship, a championship fight as chief corner, and I lost. We had a girl that fought Layla Ali, Layla Ali a girl named Erin Towhill, 
And later on, I finally got my first world champion, but this guy's one of my guys I studied on a constant basis. Like, Thank you very much. Yeah, watching film. Um, I don't know if you've seen the new Jason Bourne, but I also trained Matt Damon. And the last fight scene we did, I, we, him and I studied a lot of your fight tapes, and we made sure that your combos were in the last fight scene, the last Jason Bourne. Well, thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I don't know if you knew that either, but uh, it's just great to be here with you, man. And Very grateful. Thank yeah. you. And one question I had was, because um, I'm a boxing historian too, and I know you're really tight with Jimmy Jacobs, and he was such a great businessman. Is did, what did you learn from Jimmy that you took into what you do with business now? Jimmy was always about getting the most, getting the most money and doing the less work. And uh, Henry Armstrong was another one of my favorites. Too. Yeah, he was. You, you have some remarkable fighters you're talking about. Yeah, I believe it was. Um, he held. Um, God, I'm just gonna want to say three titles like, simultaneously for two years. I yeah. sometimes I get that mixed up and I say two titles for three years. No, he has three simultaneously yeah. at the same time. Yeah. How many businesses do you have right now, Mike? Well, I have too many quite to count. Yeah. What are what are the the bigger ones or the ones that are working for you? My cannabis business. Yeah, my cannabis. Ball bin, my bong business, my soda business, my water business. What's the water? Huh? Water. Yes. Yeah, CBD water. water. CBD water. Yes. Talk about. Let's talk about your cannabis business. What is it? What's the name of it? It's called Tyson Ranch. Tyson Ranch. Yes. And where's it located? And it's located. Depend, it depends. The way you say, it's right, right in um, El Segundo. Oh, good. Okay. A few miles from the airport. All right. And you've got your products here. You've got uh, hybrids. Yes, I'm so and happy that you this. liked it as well. Yeah. Tell me now, who are these people in here? There's an audience. We have an audience here. A bunch of people in here. It's a big show. Oh, yeah. Where do they come from? You guys, you guys work here. You guys work here. Huh? <laughs> some do, some don't. Like we have, you know, we have, we have team members in here too. But right. you know, mostly public. So listen, we have Rick Ross' son in the house. Yes, we do. And that's pretty interesting. What was that I like know. being Rick Ross' son? You got a lot of toys, didn't you? Said to answer your question, I had a few toys. Yeah, I'm sure. Not a lot. You know, nah. the kids. No, nah, you had a lot. You had a lot. Nah. Oh. <clears throat> Lost them all. Moving. My mom took me on the move. But you had them. But I lost it all. Yeah, it's better than once to have to never have it all. You got some new toys. That's what it's about. I hear you. Toy trucks. <laughs> they <might be> toy <laughs> trucks. Those are complicated <laughs> toys. Yeah, they're a little complicated, but they moving. And all that stuff you was talking about, Mike, like you touching my generation, because my generation didn't have what we needed, you know? The stuff that you're talking about right now. And I was thinking about this stuff the last three days. And it's crazy. I came here and I sat here and you start talking about it. So, you know, this is, you know, you doing, you touched me today. You know what I mean? Just from all the past 80s all the way to now. You know what I'm saying? And it's good. And I'm thankful. So. What year were you born? I was born in 87. God damn. I was the, I was I was the the baby that he had right before it all went down. I can so dig it. Eighty seven. It really wasn't. I really didn't have a whole bunch of toys. I can dig it. How, how old were you when your dad went to jail? Five. Five. Oh yeah. So you were just a kid. Yeah. Did you understand what was happening? No, I didn't find out. I didn't understand until I was ten. Yeah. Would you go visit him? I didn't visit him until I was eighteen. Oh really? And then I didn't see him on the streets until I was twenty two. Wow, that's wow. terrible. Yeah. That's hard. So, you know, mentors and all that, you know, talking to us, my generation, generation under me, me talking to the generation under me, I believe it's going to help, you know? It's helping me get through the stuff I've been through, you know, because I feel like I can go a little further now than what I did before I came in here. You know what I'm saying? We all gonna go through hard times in our life. Everybody's gonna go through adversity. It's just what you're gonna do when you're under adversity. You gotta give in, and you gotta fight back. Thank you. Peace and blessings. Thank you, brother. Let's get back to this cannabis thing. For some reason, I'm attracted to it. T t tell us more about tell about, us about more your about, this about stuff, what you're man. doing, please, Kevin. Uh, uh, well, Mike uh, uh, really believes in cannabis and and, and how it helps. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a professional athlete and dealing with. Uh, the opioids and you know the pain and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, he realized how much it helped his life, 
and, and he wanted to bring it to others. Mm -hmm. um, and he felt like, you know, as being a celebrity and uh, uh, a little um, th that, that really gave him a voice for people to hear. Mm -hmm. And uh, he put together a team, uh, Robert Hickman, the CEO, uh, um, uh, and, and made it uh, right. what I consider the best team in cannabis. Yeah. Um, he has a unique uh, take on it. Um, uh, he's focused on CBD and brand. Mm -hmm. um, he has a uh, uh, 400 acres that he's... Uh, 400 acres. 400, 400 acres with Ivan running through it in Palm Springs. Yep. Um, he's doing CBD in uh, West Virginia, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and uh, looking to expand into California right now okay. on extraction. Yep. He has a joint venture that's going to make him one of the largest extractors in the world, if not the world. Congratulations. For product. Um, he has a water line that you had mentioned. It's yep. called Chill Water that's Chill coming water. out. Yep. And okay. uh, we um, are excited when that comes out. We're thinking first quarter next year. Okay. Um, you see his flower right there, but he also has all of his wax lines coming out. Mm. Oil. He's doing a, yeah. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Blue River and their uh, Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, he's got a joint venture with Blue River. Okay. Um, also, Elodelph, which mm -hmm. we were talking about with the bongs. Um, <clears throat> he has bought Sheldon Black, which is another glass. Oh, you wait, you bought Sheldon Black? Yes, I did. And Grand that, now that, that's a good buy. Yeah. I don't know what you paid for it. But <laughs> oh, he's still move. running it. We, uh, uh, you know, Sheldon's getting older and he felt like he really, uh, and yeah. Richard, I guess is his real name, Sheldon is. But yeah, he bought that yeah. with Grunge Off and, uh, and uh, has a hybrid store it's coming out first quarter. Great. Again, working the peripherals, and I believe the ink's dry. You're on gonna have a hydroponic store, so he's gonna be selling advanced nutrients there. Big Most time. Certainly. Good man. <laughs> Can't have hydro store without advanced nutrients. Yeah. And uh, also, um, I believe the ink's dry on his insurance deal. So Dyson wait, now it, sells wait, 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 wait. cannabis insurance. That's uh, look at our industry needs someone to do insurance. Like you're gonna do crop insurance. I'll or, do your insurance. Well, listen, I, you know what? We'll talk about that. Absolutely, I like yeah, to see what you're yeah, I'm open, offering. man. I'm open. Do, don't, seriously, do you have crop insurance? And are you looking yeah. at that? What kind of we, insurance we is it? Theft of cash or yeah. like money yeah. and funds? Product liability, everything. Even, really? You know, going into employees that's, that's, insurance that's, and stuff like that. What's the name of the company? Tyson Ranch Insurance. T Tyson Ranch Insurance. Okay. Great. What else? Um, well, the game it goes on. I know. <laughs> right. that's, you're here. You got the microphone. Use it. He's yeah. also, uh, we're doing a festival called the Kind Festival out on that property. Oh, really? Um, which, uh, you know, we think today, uh, today's youth is looking to grab hold of their own, you know, like yep. last generation was Coachella. Yep. yep. And uh, we're doing a Kind Festival. I think it's in February, the first one. And uh, we just signed our major artist. I don't think I can say it yet. Okay. Though, but, All right. Um, so that'll be coming. All right. And uh, stay tuned. All right. Well, that's exciting. That's a lot. Um, a lot, yeah. So how does that make you feel? You got all this stuff going in cannabis. And also got a podcast. Well, yeah, well, yeah we're, I'm going to be on your show tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, Tell us about that one. See, I'm looking, forward, I'm looking forward to the podcast yeah. where I can ask you questions. Damn I'm, right. I'm not able to ask you questions today. You ask a few. It's okay. Yeah, okay, right. cool. How do you think that social media changes people's perception? Because nobody puts up you sitting reading a book on social media because it's boring or you yeah. studying or praying or whatever. And so it's always the idealized version of how we look, this dream life. But most of the time, we don't show the hard work. We just pretty much polarize people. You want to see some wild, bizarre stuff. <laughs> One thing that we talk a lot about on this show is how narcissistic people are in Hollywood and in business yeah, and around this town, yeah. you know, how they're, they're kind of out to get a better deal and how they play games. You know, you're going to, um, mostly the people that we do business with, we know them, mm -hmm. they know us and, um, it's just part of the game. But you, but you learn from mistakes like, like I have and Chris has. hundred percent. I mean, so there's been people have taken advantage of him and myself and I'm sure you. And so, there's a certain point in your life you just you just get smarter and you just go hey that's not going to happen again. hey you just you just, you just you just get there and you understand you yeah. just have to run the right people and life changes so what are you doing different now than you did then i don't have myself around great people yeah. before i was just crazy i think i didn't care as much for myself as i did now yeah the whole business is a whole different business perspective of my life how's your view of money changed i don't know i don't money's not a big asset to me no? No. 
It's more the game and the fun of it. Yeah, I love the game. I love being in this I'm cannabis business. Is your approach to business more about the competition and the game than the money? I like winning. Winning? Yeah. And so what would winning be in the cannabis space for you? It's being the biggest cannabis company in the world. So there's winners and losers in life? No, I don't believe in that. You think you can win win, everybody wins or no, yes, some people win bigger prizes than others, but we all win. Yeah. It's being involved in the competition is the game of winning. Okay. Just being able to be in the game, right? Yeah, is the fun. That it would be more torture not to be able to play in the game than to win, I think. Yeah. Even losing some Because it, a lose. lot of times, you know, they give out to kids now these everybody wins, you got a trophy, there's no winners and losers, that's how you play the game. And I can tell you, in life there's win, winners or losers. Winners and losers. Absolutely. But, you and know, but you said it though. You said I like winning. Like you, that, there's nothing wrong with that. I like winning too. I'm programmed to win. But you come that way. You become that way from losing. You want to win that because you don't like the way of losing anyway. Right. You know, losing yeah. sucks. It does. But you can learn from it. Yeah. What did you learn from loss? That you could, um, that you can rebound from loss. Yeah. Uh, and and how many times have you had to rebound in your life? Oh, many times. Yeah. Many times. Mm -hmm. Many times. I know how that feels. And it feels good when you get back up. And you don't do it really? Don't it really? Yeah, it does. It does, it does, it does. Like when you go into a business deal or into a new endeavor, do you build in in your mind that there's going to be failure? And so you, you don't set yourself up to be entitled to have it be easy? Because I feel like sometimes people go into ventures and they feel entitled that it should be easy. And when we do it, we talk. We know we're gonna fail well, at stuff. I never feel it's gonna be easy, but I'm gonna stay in there for the fight. I'm gonna be in there to every moment for the yeah. trip to every last moment of that fight. I'm not gonna give in. Tenacious. No, Tenacity. you have the right product. You could be that way. Yeah, I know how that feels. So about having the right product. You know, I don't go into a meeting like I'm some bully and I don't have the product, and I'm saying you buy this or else. Yeah. It doesn't work <laughs> like that. No, it doesn't. Like a mafia. So. Yeah. No one likes to be bullied or pushed around. What about rules? Like, one thing in business is like, there's rules, but then there's not rules, but people assume a social contract with certain rules and doing things and following what everybody else does. How important is it to create your own path? Hey, I don't know about creating my own path. I just know that um, there's rules, like you're saying, and there's rules to be abided. And that's, we go by all the rules in the book. But there's also rules that people assume that aren't true. M you know, mental rules of no, no what's possible. Mental rules. It has to be on paper. Yeah. yeah, but people do assume they follow the average. They follow the consensus. No, I don't deal with people that assume. What's the number one thing you learned from your past that you apply today? Being humble. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be a dick. Okay, let's. Okay, so what made you change from being from being a dick to being humble? Like I'm dead, ser dead serious about this question. Like there there was a mental shift that happened, and what was that? I just wanted to stop. Did you find out, read a book, find some information about yourself or no, anything? I just, or? I just wanted to live a different life. And then you just one day, and that's it. You said, "This is the path that I'm taking." Yes. So be humble. What else could you tell them? Number um, one, be humble. Yeah. Because you're not humble in this world, it's humble with this world with trust humbleness upon you. Yeah. Dedication, yeah. discipline. Discipline comes to be number one. Yeah. We got any questions in the audience out there? Once you started to box, did you think of trying another sport or was boxing the only one that you wanted to master? Wow, that's interesting. I only wanted to fight, I didn't want to do anything else. That's all I ever wanted to do. And why'd you only want to fight? That's all, that's all I ever wanted to do. Okay. I just never wanted to do anything else. Was there a time, though, where you, like, you just decided one day you wanted to learn to fight? No, that's the only sport I ever tried out before. Oh, really? Yeah, I never tried any sports before. So, basketball, baseball, and that stuff? Never did that, no. Right away, what is it like to have a tiger stare you in the face and have it as a pet? It's pretty cool. Like, tell me about that. Like, did you ever, like, were you ever nervous with this animal looking no, at you? To, like, they're always, predators, man. They're like deadly predators. No, but I had to get them since they were little cubs. Yeah. Right? Sure, so when yeah. They, they get bigger. They, just they just think you're, you're, they they know know think you? you're still. Yeah, there's big cats. Did they ever look at you like you were a meal? No. Like you never got no, that vibe? Never, ever. Wow. You're never nervous. Never. Ever. Never. How, how many, were they tigers or what were they? I have one lion. 
And three tigers in one line. Three tigers in one line. Yeah. And what kind of tigers did you have? Bengal tigers or like white li- white tigers? Oh wow! And what about the lion? Was that a white lion too? No, it was just a big. Natural. Was that a male lion? Yeah. Holy shit! How big did it get? Three hundred pounds. Three hundred pounds. Yeah, that's small compared to the tigers. How big did they get? They get like six hundred pounds. Jeez, jeez. Oh, wait, so you had a six hundred pound animal? You're like, what'd you do? Like wrestle with them? You ever Sleep box with them? them? Yeah. You did? Yeah. How thick are their skulls? Oh, listen, I couldn't hurt them if I tried. Oh, really? Yeah. They, so they like to play rough, though. And they, yeah, they play with you, but they can kill you in three seconds. Yeah, I know. So what are you doing here? You're like slapping around going, I hope this motherfucker don't fucking put the claws out. No. I had them no? they were babies. They're not okay, no, they're not all right. You can even train them with dogs if you have the dogs oh, yeah. the puppies and they have the cats yeah. and cubs. You can train them together. Yeah. And they'll be friends forever? Yeah, forever. Yeah. Question over here. Yeah, Mike, what do you feel is the number one quality that boxing taught you? The handle the disappointments. What? Oh. Handle disappointments. The handle disappointments. Yes. Well, okay. What did you learn from how to handle disappointments? Because sometimes you can go into a pretty big funk if something happens, right? So yeah, do you ever have a mental state that... Well, you can handle those disappointments, but you can always try again. Yes. You never give up. Correct. But, you, but some disappointments just crush people wholly. It's wholeheartedly. It's they give up wholeheartedly what they yeah. it was they run into a disappointment situation. And so you taught yourself even when you're in that situation. No, I didn't away. teach myself. I learned. You learned it. I learned. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, I see this um, this drive amongst you all, this mm-hmm. insatiable cure. To be quite honest, you guys are kind of crazy because you guys don't stop. So I guess my question is is you know, what's the end goal? Like, what are you striving for? Like, when when are you like, no, oh, I've arrived, I'm happy? Never. That would be the no, worst thing ever happened. It, 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 like, yeah. It's I, a I, journey. I, this a this is the disease that the uh, malfunction in our brains, I swear. Like, I'm addicted to business. I'm a business addict. That That's it. That's my whole world. And so it's, it's always to the next goal, the next challenge, the next goal, the next challenge. And a lot of times I don't, my mistake, I don't slow down and I don't enjoy the moment I'm in and appreciate it because I've already done it a million times in my head. So, but yeah, that's my, my thing. That's how I'm wired. How gotta, are you? Got to keep going. Got to keep going. Yeah. What's yeah. the next thing, the next thing, the next thing? You've never stopped, have you? Can't stop. You'll work all the way till the day you we'll die. Stop. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, exactly the same way. Like, by the way, if you retire, the average age for a man when they retire, how many years they live after they retire is like six point four or something like that. Yeah, so it's the like, best oh, sentence. Yeah, don't don't retire. We'll just do, do something. It. Hey, so um, you just mentioned not always being able to stop and being be present. Right. Um, and Mike, earlier you and mentioned be, how important being present is, and you mm-hmm. try to stay present. Do you have any tips for? Um, you know, having a really hectic, busy lifestyle with a lot of things going on and being able to manage to stay present so you can stay grateful and stay in the moment. Or for any of you. Oh, I'm just talking from my personal experience. Mm-hmm. I just, um, just make some time for myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just have to... I never, um, when I was fighting, I always got caught up with my ego. I was always an ego addict when I was a fighter. That's why when he was saying you have to be humble and stay check. I always know you have to check your ego. Yeah, yeah I learned that, to check your ego at the door. And then you, you actually open up to a, a better life and really uh, a incredible. better experience really and, and taking in information. Yeah, it, it, it's a big shift, by really the way. Really good stuff. It is. First, got to say, Evan has a very close resemblance to Lou Savarese. Uh, I remember Lou Savarese. <laughs> 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 I'm like, man, he looks for me. It's like Lou Savarese. But it's kind of directed towards Evan as well. Um, I know you guys are doing a lot of stuff towards the to help out the NFL players. But one of the many reasons why I kind of stopped training fighters was besides the the fighters getting fucked as much as they can by managers and promoters was the damage that they they receive. And I'm wondering if you guys are going to start to do anything to help out those those fighters that need help, like um, with the with your cannabis. Well, with my organization, Athletes for Care. You know, we are NFL players, NBA players. We've got UFC fighters. Mike is a member. You know, we are Ken, uh, not Ken, Frank Shamrock, Boss Rutten, our founding members of the organization as well. So, you know, the getting cannabis recognized as the powerful neuroprotective medicine that it is, you know, 
crosses all boundaries within sports for athletes, you know, of, of every type and uh, men and women as well. So, you know, everything that we're doing is, is driven towards getting guys and girls exactly like you mentioned, fighters, amateur to pro, you know, everyone deals with this stuff. I mean, there are high school football players out there that, have, that suffer a handful of concussions during their time in high school. And, you know, they never even get to college and they're still dealing with those brain injuries they suffered in high school. So, you know, it, it really is, you know, across the board, it's about getting this plant recognized as the medicine that it is for exactly those injuries, brain injuries, as well as, you know, dealing with addiction to opiates. You can head to athletesforcare.org. And then we're also uh, partnered with an organization called Standing United that specifically hits addiction and homelessness, getting resources and education to these people dealing with these issues. So you can head to, I believe it's standingunited.org as well. So athletesforcare.org and Standing United. And I think on the Tyson Ranch website, there might be a button to click through. Thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure. Great job. Hopefully it won't be my last time. No, it won't Thanks. Be. No. You want to come back on? Anytime. Good job. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks.